Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to another exciting episode of Fresh Off the Set. I'm Alora Murray. And I'm Sarah Jenkins. And we are so excited to talk to you guys today. I had the chance to sit down and talk to Keisha, a.k.a. K-Jazzy. Love it. Um, it was a great interview. We talked a lot about self-confidence and empowerment, which is so important because everyone has issues with self-confidence at one time or another. Absolutely. I feel like it's a universal thing and it's so important to talk about. I, I feel like it's an evergreen topic and anyone who's especially like female empowerment, someone who's really raising awareness with tips on how to boost your confidence and just kind of be comfortable in your own skin, I'm, I'm there for it. Yeah, Kay Jazzy talks, we talked a lot about tips. Um, I also read an article that talked about ways to improve self-esteem. Um, recognize what you're good at is something that can help because oftentimes when people have low self-esteem, they can't think of anything they're good at. Right. It's good to have that simple reminder because I think everyone has things that are their strong suits and just like a gentle reminder and being kind to yourself. It's like, you know what? I have value and everyone has a reason to be confident. Exactly. And then um, a couple of other things on this list that I read is one, oh, I already said it. Number two, I know how to count. Number two, <laughs> be kind to yourself. So, and I know it sounds weird, but sometimes you literally have to talk to yourself and say nice things. Yes, I love that. Um, someone, I forget who it was, was talking about um, treat yourself as though you were a child. You would never be mean to the child that you're looking at and that you're past you. But I think yes. as an adult, we tend to just be really hard on ourselves. Yeah. I remember that little kid who's so innocent. I saw um, a reel on Instagram and it was a picture of someone and they said, whenever I talk bad about myself or I say something mean about myself, I'm talking to her. And then the yeah. next clip was her as a little girl. And that hit me in the gut. It's so true and it's so powerful. And I love that she talks about all of these things. So stay, say kind things to yourself. And then one of the last things in this article was start saying no. Sometimes people with low self-esteem feel like they have to say yes to everything right. to prove to themselves and others. Boundaries are hard, mm -hmm. <laughs> but so important. <laughs> yeah, setting those boundaries. And no, it's one simple, short little word, but it's so powerful. It's so hard. <laughs> and no doesn't need an explanation. No is an answer in itself. Absolutely. No, period, end. So oh, preach, sister. <laughs> there you go. All right. So like I said, Kay Jazzy has some more amazing tips. So let's take a listen. I am so excited to be here with the Kay Jazzy, who is the host <laughs> Mixed Expressions Podcast. That was a mouthful for me. Got it out. <laughs> Good job. We are so excited to have you here. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm so excited. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. All right. So let's get right to it. Tell us a little bit about you and what your career is. So right now I am in digital media and journalism. I have always had a huge fascination with people and the stories. And really, I feel like I'm a seeker of the truth when it comes to things I view online. And I am like a bloodhound when it comes to finding out the truth. And so journalism was really impactful for me and also just learning the different stories of people. And yeah, that's that's my pursuit right now. I love that. And I that really resonates with me. One of my favorite things about our show and our podcast, journalism as a whole, is the people you meet and the stories you get to tell. Exactly. So I totally agree with you. Speaking of stories, you have a podcast. We talked about yeah. it at the beginning, Mixed Expressions Podcast. Tell us about that. So Mixed Expression Podcast came about a, a few years ago with my co-host. Um, she's in California. And we were having so many deep conversations. And in fact, they were going on for days and days. And one day we were just like, we need to put this in a podcast. And so I was like, let's do it. And so we just started taking the necessary steps of creating um, the pod mod of ideas that we had in mm -hmm. our head. And, you know, it just kind of went from there. Um, it's been really an interesting journey, and I'm excited for, you know, what else we're working on right now. I'm excited, so excited for you guys. Let's talk a little bit more about the topics you guys talk about on your podcast. Great. So a lot of it stands by our name, Mixed Expressions. So we discuss a lot of different topics. We mm -hmm. talk about um, expressing ourselves through music, expressing ourselves with food and fashion. And so, you know, like I said before, it's just a mod podge of ideas that we have. Um, we talk about just anything. Love it. That's yes. what makes podcasts fun when yes. it's, you're open to all topics. Absolutely. And one of the topics that you guys talk about that's really import important to you is female empowerment. Yes. So let's dive into that. What does empowerment look like to you? Empowerment looks like to me is just creating a space that you are able to take control of your own narrative. You can make the decisions and the choices and, and follow your dreams with no apologies attached to that. And that, that's empowering, empowerment to me. 
I love that. So what do we do? We hear the word empowerment. We kind of know how to empower ourselves. Mm-hmm. But I think so many of us, we have so many people who listen who are so kind and we want to empower the women around us. What advice would you have for those people listening who are like, how can I help these people around me? I really want to empower these women around me. What would you say to them? I would say what we're doing now is empowerment. I think creating an open dialogue of what it is that we decide to discuss and, and the challenges that women face together and, and being able to bounce ideas off each other, I think, is empowerment alone. So one is just um, creating that open dialogue and, and transparency. I love that. And what you just said, you said the word challenges. I think one of the things for me I know that really empowers me when other people have empowered me is being open with challenges they right. have. Because then you connect with someone and you feel so much more empowered when you can connect to someone. Right. And I think that's a huge part of um, taking that first step of, of accomplishing things is, is transparency and, and being honest and say, hey, I, I may have a weakness here. And, and then you're able to gain that confidence from other people because they may be able to relate to you as well. Oh, I think that's beautiful. I And I think the word when we think of empowerment, sometimes we think of it as we see these figures that we think are empowerment and we think that they are perfect. Right. But that's not what connects us to them. Yes, exactly. I love that. You know, we actually went into an episode about that, was, which was a uh, social media comparison mm-hmm. and that everything that you see isn't necessarily truthful. And, you know, being able to dissect the truth from, you know, just a fabricated glamour online um, really does help you to really take the step of empowering yourself because... You know how social media is. Yeah, well, and you just said, you talked to us earlier that you are a bloodhound when it comes to the truth. Exactly. And sometimes that is needed on social media to get through the filters and different things like that. While we're talking about that, let's talk about confidence. It is so hard. I don't care who you are. It can be so hard to believe in yourself. What advice would you give to someone who is just struggling with confidence? You know, I would just say, I would go back to what are the goals for that individual person? Mm -hmm. You know, um, also go back to transparency, being honest with yourself when it comes to um, gaining that confidence. So I would say transparency and persistence and consistency, because if you have that consistency and you have a goal in mind, each and every day, I believe that 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 confidence will grow, uh, depending on what it is exactly. So just have a goal in mind and work on it you know, whatever it may be. And I think that in time, I think your confidence will grow. It's just like learning a new thing. You I know, think, if, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, I think that is learning a new thing. Confidence can be a new thing. Exactly. I remember for me, a really, you know, personal side of my life, confidence was really hard for me for a very long time. And it almost became like a habit to not be confident. And so it was, it was easier to not be confident. I wasn't confident because I've talked about this before on our podcast. My anxiety made me feel really different. Um, There were other things. I've always been really quirky. (laughs) There are just different things about me that just, I did not feel confident and it was easier to sit in that. I knew I wasn't confident. And the idea of being confident was such a new idea to me. Right. And I didn't quite... you said it beautifully by saying trying something new. Exactly. You know, it's just like that, you know, when you first learn how to, you know, ride a bike or drive a car at first, you're like, okay, this is my first time. So be mindful. And just knowing that with time, you know, you will have that confidence. I mean, obviously it's not, you know, not everyone's lack of confidence comes from, you know, driving, but I think you get what I'm saying. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So we talked about what to do if you're struggling with it. What does confidence mean to you? I mean, that is a word we throw around all the time. Yeah. What does it mean to you? I think it just means owning who you are, even if you feel like you lack in certain places. I think owning the insecurities and showing up and understanding that whatever it is that you're looking for, you deserve that and you're worthy. And, you know, we all have improvements. So just kind of being yourself and understanding that that is enough. I like, I'm just staring at you. I was, I (laughs) loved that. If I, I was like, everyone kind of rewind the podcast, write that down. I think that is a perfect definition of confidence because it doesn't mean that you don't see maybe something you need to work on or see something that, um, can better you. It's not like you're blind to those things. It's that you see them, acknowledge them, but know you are still worthy despite those things. Exactly. And I think 
Beautifully put, Kay Jazzy. Beautifully put. <laughs> Thank you. What do you do when you feel a lack of confidence? Like, what sources do you turn to? What are What do you do? So, my first love was music and singing, and so this might be on the surface, but a lot of it is music. So I will listen to Beyonce live in my headphones. I don't think that's surface. <laughs> Do you want to sing Beyonce for us now? Oh my goodness! Maybe another time. <laughs> but a like, lot I of it, a lot of it is that. The is I, I listen to Beyonce live, and I don't know what it is. She speaks to my inner dialogue, and and that helps. So I think what it really is is going back to the source of what re- what really makes you happy. Yeah. And and music has always been something that makes me happy. So it speaks to my heart, and that it's able to amplify um, any type of insecurity. Well, decrease those insecurities, uh-huh. you know, and kind of give me that that umph that we all need. And I love what you just said is going back to what makes you happy. If you are feeling a lack of confidence, you're usually you're usually sad, not doing very well, like feeling not confident in yourself. It's it's not a fun feeling. It is not a good place to be. So thinking to yourself, what makes me happy? Exactly. And that is music for you. It could be exercising for someone. I, I went through a period of time when I would finish a workout. I was like, I am so confident. <laughs> I am Wonder Woman. I am doing this thing. So music, working out. I mean, it feels great, right? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, talking to someone you love, um, sometimes, you know, for me, a lot of when I'm feeling a lack of confidence, I am very clear to the people around me what my love languages are. And if I'm feeling, you know, lack of confidence, I'm like, I need words of affirmation. I need acts of service. There you go. And I mean, we shouldn't always rely on others for our confidence, but there's no shame in asking for help. I think that you can find that inspiration in a lot of other people as well. I love that. Because if I'm talking to you and I'm like, hey, Jazzy, I know some days you don't feel very confident. I can talk to you about that because we're being open with it. Exactly. I love that. Okay. So speaking of confidence... (laughs) Starting a podcast takes a lot of confidence because you are out on display for the whole world to hear. Yes. Where did you find the confidence to do that? I didn't have the confidence to do that. Oh. <laughs> Actually, um, you know, I knew that me and my co-host discussed a lot of really interesting topics. Um, so I think it took a lot of, you know, having that communication and open dialogue with my co-host and also when we started bringing guests on I think that the confidence you can find it in other people going back to what we were discussing is having conversations with other people um, was able to inspire me and then I and I and I do like to separate myself from other things Uh so even though I may not feel confident at the time um, I'm able to find that inspiration in other people and I think that's just enough in itself I and that is what's so great about people and their stories is finding inspiration with everyone. Everyone has a story to tell and we can connect to them through that. We talked about female empowerment. We talked about confidence. How do you think female empowerment and confidence go hand in hand? Well, I think that it takes the confidence in order to really um, feel empowered or empower other people. I think it's that, that first step. And whether we believe it or not, I believe that that little confidence is in us. So I think that confidence gives us the ability to make decisions that can possibly empower one another. And I think that's how it goes hand in hand is it's confidence and then you're able to empower people around you because they see what you're doing and they may not have the courage to do so. And sometimes it's hard to find that courage, but if you see someone who is doing it, you can follow their steps. Sometimes it's just about following someone's footsteps until... You can pave your own path. Exactly. And that's okay. And I think sometimes um, a lot of us just worry so much about doing things perfectly, being perfect. And that's just not what it's about. That's not what connects us as humans. Exactly. It doesn't. And and I think a lot of that will bring people together. And, you know, like I, going back before is when we, when you create that open dialogue, you're able to hear what other insecurities are and you're like, okay, so I'm not alone in this. I can discuss this. And, and it's quite Okay, because we're all kind of in the same situation at the same time. So let's talk a little bit more about your podcast. What has been your favorite episode so far? Oh, my gosh. That's a great question. Putting you on the spot. That's a great question. I would say the social media comparison. I think that we're all impacted by social media. And um, in the episode, we really discuss discuss our, our real lives and how we actually participated in the fabricated idea mm-hmm. of, of a perfect relationship or a perfect career and 
and that felt really whole and and I think that it was it was a lot of substance and and a lot of women and men as well can relate to that and that's one of my favorite we had an episode with uh one of uh, Lakers so former Lakers and we talked a lot about mental health uh-huh. and so that was huge and at the almost at the end of the episode we all could relate to each other I when love it came that. to you know the struggles that we all face with mental health well mental health is a topic as people who have listened know I am very very passionate about it and I think mental health plays a lot into social media I remember when social media first came out this is going to age me. I remember when Instagram first came out um, and it was more about the filters than it was about anything else. And as at the time, we just called them bloggers. They weren't influencers yet. <laughs> that came, It was like bloggers, influencers. Right. Now we say content creators. Um, I would watch them put, because this was a whole new thing to me. Social media was a whole new thing. They would put these pictures online and I didn't even have the idea to stop and think if it was curated this curated profile. I didn't even stop to think about that. I didn't think, oh, remember these filters? That's what this was originally made for, was these filters. Remember these filters? Um, You don't know how many pictures they've taken. And it, I will be honest, it messed with my head for a very long time. Absolutely. It is a big deal. And I think that it does a lot with your self-esteem. And I think that... Being going back to the source of you know who you are and and your positive traits, I think that that should outshine any type of filter. So, what would you say? <laughs> and I know you did a podcast on this. What would you say to someone who is having a very hard time with comparing themselves on social media? They get on it the minute they get off, they're feeling like bad about themselves. What would you say to someone? Like, how would you help them through that? That's a really good question. Um, I would say. You know, it kind of goes back to what you asked me before about, you know, how would someone gain the confidence? You have to be realistic with what your expectations are, you know, and relying on, you know, a filter, you know, a celebrity. Uh I mean, it's not real. So I would say that really focusing on your personal improvements and going from there, that's that's what I would say. That's what I've done. I focused on who I am what I look like, and just kind of improve who you naturally are in different ways. I mean, it's not always about the exterior all the time. And I think sometimes it is good to remember that celebrities, it's not real. That is not real life to us. Like, they have someone (laughs) who is driving them. They have a nanny. They have a chef. They have a personal trainer. So it's really good to stop and remember that's not really reality. Exactly. So what do you post on social media to kind of combat that? Or do you try to focus on being really real, really relatable? What do you post on social media? Um, I actually don't post too much. I do post a lot of, um, I, I love photo shoots. I feel like dressing up and, and expressing myself in fashion is, is a number one um, thing that I love to do. So I'll post a lot of pictures of, you know, myself and fashion and things like that. And I, I believe that, um, having your own personal time off of social media without, you know, fabricating or, or just putting yourself out there 110% because I do love my privacy. Yes. So I, I love taking pictures of myself in fashion and I'll throw in, I'm a mom, so I'll throw in a picture of my son and, you know, just kind of do what I want. Just a modge podge of, of different things I like to do. And I love what you just said there. You do what you want. I feel like oftentimes with social media, we feel like there are certain things we have to post. Exactly. I have to post this amazing thing that happened to me, or I have to post this vacation I'm at. But do you want to post it? Are you stopping and asking yourself, why am I posting this? Is it because I want to? Is it for attention? That's, and that has been something huge in, in that episode that we did is like, why do we do these things? We're trying to impress strangers. I mean, if you do it, do it for yourself, yeah. really, and, and because it makes you feel good. But make sure that that comes from a place of more substance, not that you're posting vacation photos and then you're broke when you get home. Because yeah. I feel like that happens a lot <laughs> with people. <laughs> It's like, She's just calling it how it is. Well, you know, and gosh, I feel like we've all been a victim of something online, you know, where we kind of were like, well, we need to do this. But I, I just think that you have to be realistic with yourself. And I hope that, you know, people's inner circles are able to really enforce that. Mm-hmm. So just asking yourself, 
why am I posting this? Why am I doing this? Is it making me happy? Do I even want to post this? I think those are so key. You said it beautifully. (laughs) And I'm really sad that this is a podcast and you cannot see it visually because Kay Jazzy's outfit today is on point. Mixed expressions. I mean, I'm a walking... I'm mixed expressions podcast right now. I'm just saying she <laughs> talked about fashion. Your shoes remind me of Cinderella, which makes me very, very excited. <laughs> what do you see in your future? What are some of your future goals? Because you talked about journalism, you have your podcast. What do you see in your future? I see a lot. Um, I would love to be able to continue um, journalism, but also connect the dots back to music. Mm-hmm. Um, I love doing a little bit of modeling. I would love to um, include my son in, in some of that. Um, oh, cute. Yes. I, I just want to be able to um, interview people with a great story um, because I think that that's inspiration for me to separate myself and, and really focus in and zone in on another person and another time. And, and that's what I, I would love to do. We'll see what happens, though. Well, I have all the faith (laughs) in the world that if you dream something, you will achieve it. Kay Jazzy, talking to you today has been so much fun. We are going to end our podcast with our fresh five, five random questions that I ask you. We're going to get to know you a little bit better. First, what is the best advice you've ever been given? That's a hard one to start off with. I know it. I wouldn't say it, I, I, it was a quote, actually, and I saw it recently. It says that you can do anything you want to do. You just can't do everything. Oh. I'm like, that is, that's good. Because I think that we try to be superwoman all the time, and, and you just can't do it. Just baby steps. Yeah, you can do what you want, but not. Not everything. And sometimes not everything <laughs> all at once. Exactly. Like, there maybe you, go. you have three different dreams. You can do them, but maybe they're not all going to happen. Right. At yeah. the same time. <laughs> so what was your very first concert? That's question number two. I'm actually embarrassed to say this, but it was um, a summer jam. And maybe my age is going to tell on me right here. Um, it was summer jam, and it was a Nelly concert. I love it. I can't. <laughs> my first concert, I was in high school, and my dad and my brother took me to see Van Halen. But it was Sammy Hagar was singing. So Van Hagar, that was the first concert I saw. Nice. I was just... <laughs> <laughs> they drug me to it. That's my first concert. What is your must-have sweet? I will. I should ask. Do you have a sweet tooth? Oh my gosh! That doesn't I, count as a question. That's not part of the fresh five. I just have to ask that. <laughs> I like cookies. Cookies with, with the icing. I don't know what kind of icing it is. Oh, and cheesecake. Cheesecake oh. is amazing. Yeah. Cheesecake and cookies. Love it, girl. <laughs> can you go wrong with that? I no? don't think you can. I don't think you can. What is something you are grateful for today? On this very day, what is something you are grateful for? I am grateful for the relationships I have with my family right now. The older I get, I never really realized how important they are. Um, The relationship I have with my son, I'm very grateful for having that family outlet. Um, And my friends. I love that. I... As I get older, I think I become more clingy to my parents. Like, I was never that kid that was like, leave me alone. But I need my parents constantly. Absolutely. You never realize that until you get a little bit older. And then you're like, okay, yes. Oh, I called them. My mom didn't call me the other day. And I called and was like, why didn't you call me? I don't understand. And she's like, what is, Alora, settle down. And then the last question, and I'm going to feel really embarrassed if I didn't count these right because I got so busy talking to you. I think this is number five. Okay. <laughs> Nobody out there judge me. What is your favorite season and why? I I love October. Okay, you're I, a fall girl. Yes. Well, I love to be scared. I love Halloween, and I'm like a um, huge I guess crime junkie and I love Halloween movies there we and go. things like that and and the decorations and and the fashion at that time is really big so I would say October. There you go. Well, you love fashion, so yes. I can imagine your Halloween costumes are always top notch. You know what? You would think that. But I, am, <laughs> I talk a lot though. I'm like, I'm always like, you know, next year I'm going to do this and it never happens. I end up being like something really basic, but I do appreciate other people going all out. I love it. Well, maybe this is the year. (laughs) This is the year for you, Kay Jazzy. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming in. We have loved, loved talking to you. We've really appreciated it. And everyone who has listened, thank you so much. Remember to rate, review, and subscribe, and we will see you next time.
made it to the end. If you want to continue to freshen up your day, you can watch us on Fresh Living every weekday on CBS Channel 2 in Utah at 1 o'clock. You can also watch us on our YouTube channel, KUTV Fresh Living, and follow us on social media. We will see you next week.